everyone. Welcome to our first rendition of Philly Forum. We're excited to have you all with us this evening and we have a really great lineup. Um, we're gonna be starting with some opening comments from Laura Swatko, followed by an introduction of our founding members. And then we're gonna have presentations from five um, great organizations in your local market. We'll allow all of the presenters to share a bit about who they are and what services they have to offer. And then we will open up for some questions. If you would, please enter, um, if you're able, enter into the chat your email address. And that way we can include you in future meetings of the Philly Forum. If you do have questions as we're going through and you'd like to also enter those through the chat, please feel free to do so. Um, otherwise, hold your questions for the end. For those of you who need the key commands, Alt-M will mute and unmute your line. Alt-V will turn on and off your camera. And Alt-Y will allow you to raise and lower your hand. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and let Laura get things kicked off with our welcoming and introduction. Laura, over to you. Great. Thank you, Michelle. So excited to be here. And just for those of you that have usable vision, I don't know if you could see, I still have Christmas lights up in the back of my house. So I'm one of those crazy people, but I love my holiday lights and it's my last thing that I have. So I hope you can enjoy it if you like them. Anyway, um, the fabulous Philly Forum. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Um, the forum is going to provide, it's a platform for professionals serving the blind and low vision community um, in Philadelphia and the outlining areas. The goals that we've set um, for the forum are to make sure that professionals, you know, like yourselves, are aware of all of the resources and opportunities for the blind and low vision community here in Philadelphia, um, Delaware, and Southern New Jersey areas. The, um, the forum is going to allow for professionals, you know, like ourselves to connect and collaborate so that we can provide the array of services available to persons like myself and our family members. Uh, what we hope to do is periodically meet throughout the year. We haven't decided um, how often we're going to do it. Um, as you all know, this is our annual meeting and we're just super excited to be here and to come together and collaborate and uh, bring some energy to the community here in Philadelphia. Awesome. Thank you, Laura. Um, hopefully we will be able to have a Philly forum. I'd like to have at least three this year, potentially four. Um, and what I'd like to do now is introduce our founding members. So um, there was a group of us that came together to put this Philly Forum in action. I'm Michelle Blaze, Director of Professional Outreach for the Foundation Fighting Blindness. And Andrew Kim is part of my team. We're, uh, he's our Professional Outreach Coordinator. So the two of us were part of the founding member team. Um, Ranju, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Thank you, Michelle, for putting this together. We met at uh, the International Low Vision Conference in Denver, and here we are. So I'm excited to be here. And I just wanted to just give um, everybody just a little bit of background information about myself. Um, I grew up in the area. I grew up in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, actually. I did my undergrad at Rutgers, my doctorate's in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania College of Optometry, and actually did uh, my residency in low vision rehabilitation at the University of Houston College of Optometry. So basically, I am a low vision optometrist that's been practicing in the area for well over 25 years. I've worked at the Feinblum Center actually a year after, immediately after I finished my residency and following that, I was at the Penn Center for Low Vision at the JI Institute for over 21 years. I just left in 2022. And presently I'm at the Philadelphia VA Hospital as an optometrist, but I'm now my current position in low vision rehabilitation is at the Will's Eye Hospital, providing low vision care to their patients. And proudly I'm on the board of VisionLink and the advi and um, an advisory board member at Best Work Industries. So I still um, am knee deep in low vision. So what I'd like to talk about today is basically I, as a low vision optometrist, uh, what I do for our patients that have been referred to me. So um, 
you know, often we're the first provider that an individual sees once they have difficulties with their vision. And the usual and the referral is usually made by their eye care provider, their optometrist or ophthalmologist who's managing their eye diseases. So once they start losing their vision, um, what ha where do they go once um once they need help with doing things, doing the things that they need to do better? So when they get referred, uh, we provide a low vision evaluation. And the main point of the low vision evaluation is to assess their visual function, offer strategies to improve their function, develop a care and treatment plan and uh, with a referral to a coordinated care team and prevent their visual impairment from becoming a handicap and overall to improve their quality of life. So briefly, I'd like to speak about what happens in a low vision um, exam, it, maybe basically uh, we focus uh, predominantly on their history, on their functional difficulties. What are their, what areas are they having difficulties with? Um, the psychosocial aspect, uh, determine how they're coping, to, um, social determinants, you know, what other areas, um, what other determinants that, and um, insecurities are impacting their visual function and their health um, outcomes of their health, health outcomes. And establishing the goals, what do they want to see better? Um, so here with the examination that I do, um, we I assess their visual acuity at distance and near, um, assess their peripheral vision to determine what may impact their mobility. You know, for example, are they having bumping into things, tripping over things? Um, are they, uh, you know, falling? You know, also um, the refraction, we wanna make sure that they have their best corrective visual acuity. Glasses are so important um, with many people with impairments and sometimes that's all that they need. They haven't gotten a good pair of glasses in a long time. We um, do a device assessment, what low vision devices are available or what, we what do we have that can help them do the things that they need to do better. Um, and finally also working in a tertiary care eye care facility, I, we also assess their ocular health. Oftentimes, um, pay, we want to make sure that there's no changes in their vision from what, what they were before. And if they're using drops or medications, we want to make sure that they're, um, that they're working for them. So for example, if someone has um, glaucoma, we always check their eye pressures to make sure that they're using their drops like they should be. Um, so the devices that we have available for them for reading in order to help them improve their vision, um, we have handheld magnifiers. We also assess using high power reading glasses, such as um, reading microscopes, prismatic readers, and we can even consider electronic magnifiers, such as a closed circuit television and portable electronic magnifiers for distance in order to see faces a little bit better. There's telescopes that can be either handheld or bioptic where they're mounted onto a pair of glasses. Um, we also consider you know, text-to-speech devices such as um, the OrCam or smart reader that basically turns text and um, turns text into speech. We also address glare and light sensitivity by using help, um, helping them with this by using filters or uh, sunglasses and then consideration of non-opticals, okay? Um, what is most important is referring for rehabilitation, for training to the appropriate professionals who can help them with their needs beyond what we're able to do and also referrals to agencies and resources, um, which are, which is crucial, absolutely crucial. Okay. Um, so that's basically what I do in a nutshell. As I said, I'm over at the Wills Eye Hospital. If there's any questions, um, I would love to answer them. And yeah. Thank you, Dr. Prasad. Very, very good overview. Um, we appreciate you being yeah. a part of our founding member team. Um, and thank you for sharing uh, the services that you provide. As an individual with retinitis pigmentosa myself, I um, can testify that it is so helpful to have access to services like you have to offer. And as vision changes, and as those of us who have vision loss go through that, that progression of disease, those services become more and more valuable at different stages in the vision loss journey. So thank you for sharing. Um, if anyone has questions for Dr. Prasad, please either enter them into the chat or hold them until the end, and then we'll open up for those questions. Um, before I move on to our next presenter, I did want to um, let Laura Swatko 
introduce herself. She is also one of our founding members, and I should have mentioned that before, Laura. You just want to give a, a brief overview of the work that you do with BIT? Sure. Um, hi, yes. My name is Laura Swatko. I live in the Villanova area. Um, I have Usher syndrome. Um, what I do, and I'm a consultant, and most of my work is in workforce development. I work with a nonprofit called BIT, the Blind Institute of Technology, and we focus, we're basically a nonprofit staffing agency for the blind and low vision community. Um, and also, I do a lot of volunteer work with professional outreach, which is Michelle and Andrew at the foundation. Thank you, Laura. Laura is also part of our Philadelphia chapter with the Foundation Fighting Blindness. And i um, not sure if Bailey Bosselman's on the call, but she's our chapter director for the East Coast for the foundation as well. So um, she's over the Philadelphia chapter. Thank you. So our founding members, um, the last group that is a founding member of the Philly Forum is Vision Work. I'm sorry, Vision Link, excuse me. <laughs> Um, and Beth, is are you going to be presenting or is Carl yes, on as well? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So hi, everyone. My name is Beth Deering. I'm the chief program officer for Vision Link. Um, unfortunately, our CEO, Carla McKinney, was not able to join tonight. But fortunately, I am joined by um, the wonderful Sylvia Purnell, who is our director of community engagement and partnership. So we'll be, uh, you know, briefly, I know it's a brief presentation tag teaming off of each other. Um, I am so thrilled to be a part of this group. I, I feel so proud to work with such esteemed colleagues and really get this information and resources out there to everyone who would benefit from them. So I'm really looking forward to, to next steps and future meetings and just this wealth of information being shared, um, throughout our, our profession. Um, so, uh, I want to also let everyone know that we do have um, accessible digital flyers that I will be sharing with Michelle to to or or Laura whoever or perhaps Andrew um, to share with whoever is in this meet uh, meeting um, afterwards. So for any additional information or if you want to share information with any of your colleagues or clients, um, they are digital flyers. They're fully accessible. So um, Vision Link, what we are uh, is we're a comprehensive resource and education center, and we try to combine a client-centered focus with direct services and in-community partnerships with different um, organizations in Philadelphia, as well as remote organizations. So we provide education and support, supportive resources for any individual at any level of vision loss um, to, to help identify and work on crucial adaptive skills and promote adjustment to vision loss. So the way that we do this is through um, our three main programs, vision rehabilitation, our education and pro uh, training programs, and our community connections. And I'm gonna just quickly hand it over to Sylvia to talk in a little bit more detail about what the, those programs look like. Absolutely, thank you, uh, Beth. Um, our vision really Oh, uh, vision rehabilitation therapy. These are clients who learn compensatory skills and assistive technology um, and for managing everyday life independently. And our education training programs, which is a second tier, are clients who have access to a full schedule of classes and hands-on instruction. And then our community connections. Uh, clients build relationships with others who share similar life experiences and connect with community-based uh, resources. So in terms of our workshops and classes, they're broken down into uh, four areas. Um, access technology, which includes our iPhone instruction, app workshops, adaptive technology and software, our orientation and mobility uh, that provides safe, efficient, and effective travel skills on a one-on-one -on -one basis, of course, our home management, which provides the compensatory skills for independent uh, living. And then our low vision services. We have a wonderful uh, certified uh, low vision rehab therapist uh, on staff who has really added to the meat, um, as we always say at Vision Link, the meat on the bones, and she's been amazing in that area. Um, in terms of community connections, um, we have information referrals to wraparound community services. Um, anyone who calls Vision Link, we, we forward them or refer them to medical providers as well as social services. 
Um, we have community education and presentations, which we're expanding upon and partnering with uh, a lot of social service and medical providers to provide information and resources on best practices, awareness, and um, living and assistive technology for individuals, caregivers, and providers. Uh, because I, I believe, we believe that some people take it for granted because you are a caregiver, you know the total wellness of the patient. And a lot of, and a lot of times what we're finding is that they also need some additional uh, training with regard to those who are blind and visually impaired. And we also provide a broad range of community-based activities uh, led by our partners and community organizers that we work with, whether it be arts and culture and health and wellness, because you can't always be in class all the time. You want to have that uh, social connection with uh, those who share that common um, um, moment with you. Um, and we have support groups as well, in, in addition to those arts and cultural opportunities. Thank you, Sylvia. So really, it's a lot of information. We do have a slide deck, but for the sake of time today, we know we're like five to seven minutes, so we didn't want to spend so much time flipping through. Um, we we um, we kind of look at ourselves as like a Philly 211 for blind and vision services. We really want to give that wraparound experience where regardless of what you're looking for in that moment, we can be a warm handoff either to an external resource or we can provide the service ourselves. Um, so how, how to become a client, and I, this is our, our final uh, little bit, um, it's very, very easy. So the only requirement we have is that you're over the age of 18. We're not restrictive to where you live. We're not restricted to any level of income. All of our services are no cost to the individual accessing them. Um, um, we have both remote and in-person learning opportunities, so we can be accessible to anyone really all over the country. Um, our community partners are primarily based in Philadelphia, so if you're looking for resources and referrals um, close to home, we'll be able to provide that. So I'm going to just drop in the chat the information on how to become a client, uh, and I will also make sure that everybody receives our flyers that say the step-by-step -step of our um, enrollment process. So if anyone has any questions for, for Sylvia or myself, you know, please reach out. We're also on all of our socials. We're on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, as well as our website, visionlinkphl.org. Thank you so much for having us tonight. If I can make one um, um, comment, Michelle, and I'm sorry not to save it to the end, but just a quick thing for anyone listening in. Um, I did some training with Vision Link, and one of the things they're really good at with their O&M specialist is they have someone who specializes in mass transit in the city who will help you navigate yeah. the train station, the subway, the high speed line, like just a really great asset to anyone who takes mass transit in Philly. I highly recommend it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, he's been doing it for 40 years, so he's he's pretty <laughs> adept. <laughs> oh, and um, I just wanted to add something, Beth. Did you mention the Lighthouse Fund? Oh, no, we didn't. Thank you so much okay. for bringing that up. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, if, if, if everyone is okay with just one or two more minutes of your time. Um, so we have, um, we're very fortunate to have a fund, uh, the Lighthouse Foundation, which provides financial assistance to individuals looking to purchase assistive and adaptive devices. Um, we really try to identify the specific need of the individual, work in collaboration with wonderful doctors like Dr. Prasad, as well as our vision rehabilitation therapists to ensure that people get the devices that they need in order to be independent. Um, and we can fully uh, purchase that for an individual who demonstrates any any financial need. So um, definitely a good service that we'd love to spread the word on. We really would love to give people the opportunity. We know how expensive most of those devices can be. Mm -hmm. It ranges anywhere from daily living aids, you know, a pen friend, liquid level indicator, things that you might need in your home for labeling organization, all the way through um, very high cost, um, low vision devices, magnifiers, CCTVs, um, and other, you know, great technology that comes out every day. So thank you so much, Dr. Prasad, for bringing that up. 
And may I sure. say just quickly, we do have a grant where we provide for those who qualify, not through uh, financial uh, qualifications, an iPad uh, program where we do provide free iPads to those individuals who agree to certain parameters and criteria. Um, one, uh, and it, prov and it provides that service to those who are specifically low vision um, because of the magnification that an iPad can provide. So I just wanted to make sure we mentioned that. All right. Thank you so much, um, Beth and Sylvia, for that wonderful overview of all the great resources offered through Vision Link. Um, we are happy to share, you know, summary as well as your contact information. This is for all of the presenters with everyone who is participating on the call. So um, you'll just get to us whatever you'd like us to, to share out after. We're happy to do that to make sure that we're all connected. So thank, thank you. you very much. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, so next up, we've got Alex with Accessible Pharmacy Services and perhaps Andy. I'm not sure if Andy made it on the call, but over to you, team. All right, that, it's wonderful. Thank you so much for uh, having me. Actually, uh, so this is uh, Alex Cohen. Uh, Andy could not make it this evening, but that's fine. I'm, I'm a proud, proud uh, co-founder of Accessible Pharmacy Services, and I also... Um, function is the chief marketing and accessibility officer. Um, I myself have uh, retinitis pigmentosa, so I'm not only a founder, I'm also a, a, a patient. So Accessible Pharmacy Services specializes in medication management and diabetes management for uh, patients who are uh, blind or, or low vision. And um, we started this company uh, a couple years ago now uh, with the idea of you know doing a lot of research in the marketplace and, and understanding that things just are not as accessible as they need to be, uh, particularly in the pharmacy space, whether this is uh, the, the websites uh, for, for pharmacies or how people receive their medications, how people uh, organize or manage their medications, read labels, reorder, refill uh, prescriptions. And you know, managing medication, managing uh, diabetes is is difficult enough, and adding in the additional challenges and, and barriers thrown up by by vision loss makes it even more difficult. And so that's what we're here to do. As part of our community, we uh, work uh, around the clock to alleviate and remove those barriers. Uh, we understand that uh, accessibility is a moving target. There's always uh, new technology that comes out, new innovations, uh, but also um, that the patient that we um, that we have uh, who signed up with us a year ago uh, with progression vision loss, their their needs, you know, they're a unique patient and their needs change over time. Um, so our philosophy is each patient is just that uh, a unique patient. And we work with that individual to find out, you know, what works best for them, um, you know, based on their uh, medication regimen, uh, their goals, uh, difficulties and challenges that they're having. And we really put them on on the path to success. But, you know, when I say all patients are, are unique, you know, it, it depends what what people have going on. For example, you know, with my retinitis pigmentosa, I'm also lucky enough to have uh, some lousy genes and have a little bit of high cholesterol and, and blood pressure. So, you know, thanks mom and dad. But um, the way that I can manage my medications is in the morning, I can take my, my vitamin A and my lutein and my uh, amino acids and fish oil and NAC along with my blood pressure medication. And then also in my uh, same package, uh, I have my evening medications that has my evening uh, uh, dosage of NAC as well as my um, cholesterol medications. Uh, but obviously people could be much more complex than this and have to take medications first thing in the morning, um, after breakfast, after lunch, after dinner and before bedtime. And so we offer packaging and labeling to um, help people better organize and, and create a, a regimen and a schedule um, 
and that they can manage their medication better. We also uh, work very closely with the uh, uh, blind and low vision community, and we hire uh, people from uh, the blind and low vision uh, community as, as our sales representatives and to work with us in our customer care uh, positions and also offer opportunities for blind and low vision uh, blind and, and low vision college students uh, for internships for those students who might be interested in sales and marketing or in, in healthcare. Um, we also offer uh, a number of different educational programs. We uh, uh, just a few months ago started our diabetes uh, prevention program where we have lifestyle coaches help people, uh, you know, understand uh, what pre, you know, what uh, pre-diabetes means and what they need to do to do things like uh, uh, manage their diets and nutrition and, um, you know, exercise and, and fitness regimens to try and keep them themselves out of uh, out of the danger zone, so to speak. We also offer a, a number of different uh, educational webinars. Um, that we we uh, look at different subject matter that specifically, uh, uh, you know, the accessibility of the information for the blind and low vision community, such as uh, things like uh, blood uh, blood um, sorry uh, blood pressure and cardiology or uh, continuous glucose monitoring systems, um, as well as um, uh, hosting uh, events for mental health. And, and the blind and low vision community. Actually, uh, uh, we're very excited. We uh, just started uh, marketing um, our uh, blindness and mental health uh, summit, which is going to take place on June 14th and uh, is going to be uh, a major um, uh, online uh, virtual conference uh, pairing uh, people from the blind and low vision community with uh, mental health professionals and and other ancillary uh, services to to try and get people on 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 the right path. So, I mean, the tenets of good medication management um, and accessibility and education uh, and being part of the the community, um, we really understand. Uh, what the blind and low vision patient is going through uh, and, and all of our training for our customer care representatives, you know, has them have that special sensitivity and understanding as well. And so, um, you know, you don't need to go to a place that isn't prepared. Uh, you know, they don't, they might have some accommodations in place just in case the blind or low vision um person comes in from the neighborhood, this is, you know, at accessible pharmacy services, accessibility and our patients, you know, are not an afterthought. This is our primary focus and what we do and the services we provide is to alleviate those barriers and challenges uh, to, to many different areas of health care, but uh, specifically in the uh, medication and, and diabetes and, and mental health uh, for our patients. So that's kind of us in a nutshell, and uh, we'd certainly be happy to discuss anything further or, or take any questions. Also, if you'd like more information, uh, you're always welcome to visit our website at accessiblepharmacy.com, as well as, um, or email us at info at accessiblepharmacy.com, and happy to answer any questions and, and see if, uh, you know, your insurance, uh, we work with your insurance and, and how we can help you uh, live a, uh, a healthier and, and, and uh, you know, better life. Alex, thank you so much for that great overview of accessible pharmacy services. Um, thank you for sharing uh, a little bit about yourself as well and your um, personal journey with vision loss with RP. So, a wonderful presentation. We appreciate you providing that information to everybody on the call today. Next yes, thank up, you for having me. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Next up, we have Overbrook School for the Blind. Bethany, your turn to take the floor. Terrific. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. And thank you, Michelle, and the founding members of the Philly Forum for this opportunity to speak. I have learned a lot already. So very happy that you're doing it. Thanks for inviting me. I'll, I'll look for the future ones as well. My name is Bethany and I work at the Overbrook School for the Blind in West Philadelphia. 
And Overbrook serves students from birth through just after high school, through early intervention services, academic services, pre-K through 12th grade. Uh, they have a low vision clinic and many short-term programs in the summertime. And, um, and I started in a brand new position at Overbrook last fall, developing a new program that I'll introduce here called our Next Step Skills Program. It is... Uh, designed to improve the work readiness of young Pennsylvanians age 18 to 24 who are blind or have low vision. And this is kind of a, a growth from what was discovered and learned through the pandemic that many good high quality programs can be delivered virtually. And delivering them virtually also reduces the barrier of transportation and geography. So Overbrook is very happy to launch this new program, specifically targeting uh, young Pennsylvanians uh, and uh, improving their work readiness. Our first program, our first session launches later this month in February. And let me give a quick overview to what the program looks like. We enroll as AmeriCorps members and instructors, young adults, Pennsylvanians who are blind and low vision, age 18 to 28, who are online instructors and mentors. Students enroll in the program and are matched with a mentor and attend two weekly sessions. One is a focus topic on a work readiness uh, theme, so it could be growth mindset, understanding your own learning style, looking at career opportunities and discovering what might be interesting. And one session is strictly a fun activity with no other intention than to enjoy being together. We know that for students who are in public schools, they may not know other students their age who are blind or low vision. And so here's an opportunity to socialize uh, with peers. And then each student also has one-on-one -on -one mentoring with an instructor, and the mentoring is targeted at those transition skills. What's coming up after high school? How to transition to school, work, or life after high school or after college? Uh, intended to be what's called near-peer mentoring, shared life experiences, and very close in age, very close in, in life, um, the phase of life as well. We're actively recruiting for instructors, uh, again, for young adults age 18 to 28 who live or go to school in Pennsylvania. And also, uh, we have a couple of student sessions coming up. So when I'm done speaking here, I'll pop in the chat our website and my email address uh, so you can follow up. The intention here is to build the work readiness of young Pennsylvanians who are blind or visually impaired and support them through their next steps uh, into whatever comes next for them in school, work, and life. So happy to share more individually. And if this is the right time, I'll put things in the chat, both our email address, my email address and our website. Thanks again. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Bethany. Um, I, I believe that I heard the most recent numbers were something like 70% of individuals with low vision or blindness are either un or underemployed. So a wonderful um, you know, opportunity for the, the young folks in our blind and low vision, low vision community to get some, some training uh, for employment. And that's actually a really good segue into our next presenter as well. So please do enter your information into the chat. Um, we are about to hear from our final presenter and then I'll have some closing remarks and then we'll open up for questions. So without further ado, Lauren, Best Work Industries. Thank you, thank you. Good evening, everybody. My name is Lauren Scarpa. I am the Director of Communication, Marketing and Fundraising for Best Work Industries for the Blind. We are the largest nonprofit an employer of people who are blind or visually impaired in the state of New Jersey. And I'm joined by Tom Black, who is our VP of Products and Business Services. So just to tell you a little bit about who we are and what we do. So Best Work is a nonprofit, as I mentioned, we're located in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. And our mission is to improve the quality of life for people who are blind or visually impaired um, by providing training and employment opportunities in a supportive work environment. We operate under a federal program called Ability One, 
And it's very important for me to uh, mention that we are considered a competitive, integrative work workplace. Um, so what does that mean? That actually means that we have people who are blind and visually impaired working side by side with people who um, are sighted. They're doing comparable jobs, making the same wages, which is very important. So let me tell you a little bit about Best Work because um, we're kind of the hidden gem in this area. So we have an interesting history. Uh, we are veteran founded. Our roots date back to a gentleman named Jim Versaki. He was a veteran who lost his sight in World War II and just a fun fact, he's also a founding member of the Blind Veterans Association, the BVA. Um, and uh, he and his wife, Rita, um, were actually the brains behind this operation. So after returning home from war, Jim went back to work on his family farm here in South Jersey um, while he healed and learned to live without sight. Um, as time went on, he felt really compelled to help people like him so he connected with the New Jersey Commission for the Blind and Visually Impaired, who had an opportunity for both him and his wife. Rita began working for CBVI, training people who were blind, um, teaching them how to sew. And Jim began working as the manager of what was then known as Contract Shop Number 3. It's a state-funded workshop employing people who were blind, many of them veterans, and producing textiles and providing packaging and distribution for local businesses like RCA, and uh, Campbell Soup. When the state ran out of funding, Jim was determined to keep his employees working. He established a board of directors, worked with local businesses and the national industries for the blind to form Best Work Industries for the Blind in 1981. Historically, Best Work is known as a textile manufacturer. So basically that means um, a lot of our employees come in and they are sewing. We are registered Department of Defense contractor producing neckerchiefs, fleece jackets, flight deck jerseys, and physical fitness pants for the United States Navy. And we produce a cold weather undershirt and fire resistant t-shirt for the United States Army. All through our partnership with the Defense Logistics Agency in Philly. We're ISO certified and pride ourselves on producing and shipping the highest quality products on time. So let's, let, let's fast forward a little bit. Let's go to 2021. Um, that's the year that really set the new path for Best Work. Under the leadership of John Katz, our president and CEO, who's also a veteran, we're embarking on ambitious plans to reach and serve more people in New Jersey who are blind or visually impaired. Our organization is transforming from a self-sustaining manufacturing agency to a full service social enterprise. So what does that mean? Right now we're an, empl an employment program but we do not provide any social services to people in our community. That's about to change. Our operational paradigm is shifting to include diversified lines of business that will provide upward mobility, as well as offer rehabilitative services to the BVI community. Diversifying is gonna allow Best Work to focus on creating additional jobs and opportunities for upward mobility that provide our existing employees and new hires an opportunity to develop new skill sets. The business line expansions include knowledge-based services, such as document scanning and digital imaging, e-commerce through our Best Work Supply Center, kitting, and light assembly. The idea is to create high-density labor that is both scalable, replicable, and portable. So far, diversification efforts have led to new jobs and upward mobility for employees who are blind in e-commerce, document scanning and digital imaging, accounting, kitting, warehousing, and recruiting. In addition, we're partnering with state, local, and private organizations to implement an internship slash transition program that will help students who are visually impaired explore employment opportunities through internships in manufacturing, human resources, sales, and marketing. We're truly excited about the path we're on and look forward to sharing more in the near future. If you know someone who is looking for employment opportunities, please don't hesitate to contact us. I'll put, just like everybody else, I'll put our contact information in the chat. Um, and if anybody would like to come for a tour, we love having people come through these doors because I can tell you all about it, but until you come here and actually see our people on the floor or in the building, like you won't believe it. So please, you know, if that's the case, please also contact us. We are happy, to, happy, happy to have everybody come in. 
Um, and then for anybody else who would just like to learn more, you can visit our website. It's brand new and just redone. It's bestworkindustries.org. And I'm happy to, we're happy to entertain any, any questions that anybody has too. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, Lauren. Round of applause for all of our presenters. Yay. Everybody did great. Thank you so much for um, your um, adherence to time schedules. We are right, right aligned with what I had hoped that we would have um, going in terms of a timeline. So we're going to have plenty of time for questions. Um, Andrew, if you want to go ahead and put up the slide that has all of the presenters and their contact information, that would be great. I want to, again, extend a special thank you to Dr. Ranju Prasad, Laura Swatko, Beth Deering, um, Carla, although she's not on the call, our founding members for the Philly Forum. It has been a pleasure to work with all of you to build and develop this first meeting. I'm looking forward to meeting with all of you to design our May um, forum, so stay tuned for that. On behalf of the Foundation Fighting Blindness, um, I'd like to say thank you for joining us. For those of you who don't know who the Foundation Fighting Blindness is, we are the world's largest private funder of retinal degenerative disease research. The mission of the Foundation Fighting Blindness is to drive research to find treatments and cures for blinding retinal diseases like retinitis pigmentosa, Stargardt disease, Usher syndrome, and even forms of dry age-related macular degeneration. Through the work we do, um, especially our professional outreach team, Andrew and I really seek to provide the professional community with resources that they need to provide knowledge, community, and hope to patients and families as they go through their personal journeys with vision loss. Uh, community actually comes through groups like all of you have presented. So Thank you so much for um, sharing your resources in the Philadelphia area, Philadelphia and surrounding areas. For anybody on the call who would like to be connected with the foundation through our local Philadelphia chapter, please feel free to reach out to myself. You can email our team at po at fightingblindness.org. You can visit, visit our website, fightingblindness.org as well for more information. Bailey Bosselman um, or Laura or Alex can all help you with the Philadelphia chapter connection if you'd like to learn more and get connected in that regard. Um, for the professionals on the call, I just wanna give a little, a little bit of information about a, an initiative and webinar that we are going to be promoting for the month of March. If any of you are connected to eye care professionals who might wanna learn about how to best care for their patients with inherited retinal disease, we are gonna be hosting a webinar March 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. We have two key thought leaders, um, Dr. Rochelle Lynn, who is an OD from Ketchum University out in California, and Dr. Rachel Huckfelt from Mass Eye and Ear in Boston. They're gonna be providing best clinical practices for patients with inherited retinal disease, an overview of how to provide care, diagnostic testing to provide, why genetic testing and genetic counseling is important, and even a bit about low vision rehabilitation and clinical uh, research that's underway. So we'll be sharing that information with um, our network at large and all of you as well as we begin to, to promote that. That will be in alignment with a national campaign or a national initiative that we're going to be also embarking upon called Envisioning a Path to Hope. And uh, that initiative is designed to raise uh, awareness about resources. To individuals with low vision or blindness through the foundation and also through all of that. Um, okay, so with all of those comments, all of the presentations, I would like to go ahead and open things up for questions for any of our presenters. And we still have about 15 minutes for that. So please um, go ahead and, and either speak up if you want to just uh, you know go ahead and ask your question. Um, if you are on mute and you need to unmute, it's Alt-M. If you'd like to raise your hand and you're using JAWS, it's Alt-Y. And Andrew, if there are any questions in the chat, I will ask for you to assist with that. Um, I have a question. I don't know. Andrew, is yeah. it okay if I go? Go ahead. Laura. Go for it. Laura. 
Um, I don't know if I missed it, but for best work industries, um, are your services for individuals only in the state of New Jersey or can they be from, you know, Pennsylvania, Delaware, et cetera? Nope. They can also be from Pennsylvania and Delaware. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Andrew, were there any questions in the chat? There are no questions in the chat. Okay. Um, everyone I everyone has generously shared all their contact information in the chat, though. So thank you, everybody. Um, I have another question for Alex. If Alex, are you still on the call? Alex, can you hear me? Oh, Alex, you're on mute. Alt M. I'm 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 here. Sorry about there that. You <laughs> Wake up. I, Sorry, no, no, no. I was I was here. I'm I'm. You know. I know. I know. Just kidding. Um. So is um. Do you have any events coming up? Like, if anyone wanted to see some of your products, we could learn a little bit more, a little hands on. I think it's something um might be interesting to see, touch, feel any of of, of your you know products. You know um. So most of our events are are virtual because we are able to, you know, um, reach so many more people, uh, and and you know, doing that in that manner. And it, it, um, we're often in, invited. Uh, Andy or Alexander or myself are often invited to um, uh, present uh, our information in a lot of different uh, venues. Um, I I actually don't know when our next like live conference or something like that that we're going to be attending where we actually have physical where we actually have physical um, you know packaging and things like that for people to to peel but you know anybody who is anybody who's actually interested in our services again can always uh, email uh, uh, us at info at accessiblepharmacy.com and we could uh, set up a, a, a Zoom presentation for you to actually see some of um, uh, the, the the products and services that we that we supply our patients. Do you, um do do you ever go out at all to um, some of the retirement communities to do presentations for those individuals? Uh, not not normally to retirement communities are uh, so just like any good uh, accessible product there's a universal design feature that you know if it works well for the the blind and low vision community it will work well uh, for for the senior community uh, also um, we do a lot of work through uh, pace and, and and the pace program but we don't actively um, uh, we don't actively offer or or solicit our services at um, at retirement uh, retirement institutions. Okay, thank you. That's not that's not. This a bad is area, Beth though. Deering. <laughs> Sorry. I just wanted. This is Beth Deering. I wanted to just share from um, our experience, having had the pleasure of working with Accessible Pharmacy a few times. They've come and done um, speaker series presentations for us remotely through Zoom, and they have been a wealth of information. Really, really just comprehensive sharing. These are the different devices. Here's how to sign up. And they've even followed up with the clients that were on the call to make sure that they got samples of things that they were talking about, that they were able to sign up. So um, they've they've come in in presentations. Thank you so much, Alex, to you and Andy. We really, um, it, it, so even if it's not in person, Laura, we've benefited so much just from the remote presentation as well. Okay, thanks. It's it's a little tough because we don't have a physical pharmacy. Um, yeah. You know, it's not like you you walk into accessible pharmacy and uh, have this this marvelous experience. It really is uh, through through the phone and and through online or through. Uh, if anybody is familiar with the uh, Be My Eyes application, we do uh, a lot of uh, uh, commu communication with our our patients through the Be My Eyes uh, specialized service. 
uh, application. And, um, you know, we, we, we love presenting, we love sharing our information and uh, we go wherever we're, we go wherever we're invited. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Any other questions out there for any of our presenters? Actually, Michelle, um, I don't have a question, but I just wanted to add something that I totally forgot to mention when during my talk. Yeah. Um, when you know, I was talking about you know, evaluating devices, prescribing devices, and then referrals to resources. I just want to say that um, it's wonderful the relationship that we have with Vision Link. Not only am I on the board, but Alexis, who's the VRT, comes to Wills and does um, some of her training over there. So, you know, for the for example, if I see a patient, I refer them to Vision Link for resources, um, even to the Lighthouse Fund. They can get the device, and then they can be trained on site with the device. That's so, so yeah, important. I just wanted to, I completely forgot to mention that, but just wanted to bring that out there. And can you, can you share a little bit more about what the device training looks like? Because I think that that's a really important aspect of, you know, for, for the low vision community, not only having the device, but learning how to utilize it. Is there, do you do that all during the office visit or do you follow, do you follow up on that? Can you? Um, we do do follow-ups. I would either I'd bring them back for a follow-up uh, and I also have a technician who's absolutely wonderful who will call the patient. But um, the determination of the the length of the training and what it entails is determined by the VRT, the, um, the rehab therapist. So, you know, every, it goes from everything from how to um, turn on the device, changing the batteries, um, using it exactly as you know for example if it's a magnifier making sure they're holding it correctly um etc you know if they're using a telescope making sure they know how to focus it spot it's it's pretty it could be pretty detailed and it's very specific to the patient some some are quick learners some need a little more time so yeah the thank thank you <laughs> dr Prasad, for bringing that up and thank you for the question i think it was laura that asked um because of this wonderful relationship, our VRT Alexis gets a lot of information up front from Dr. Prasad, the evaluation, the level of need. Um, and then the VRT meets with the individual either by phone, most likely in person, to go through their specific needs. And then the length of time for the training is determined on that initial evaluation with the VRT. So as Dr. Prasad said, at that point, they'll discuss what the device is, the use of it, how, you know, how to how to charge it, how to change the battery. Um, and then based on that first exchange, they'll plan some follow up up visits if necessary. Um, so it really is dependent on the device and the individual. Um, but we're prepared to um, assist with training on almost all of the low vision devices that Dr. Prasad um, recommends for individuals. And uh, fortunately, working with Dr. Prasad and her low vision tech, we're, we're able to get like information as it comes out. Beth, thank you. This is Michelle. In addition to that, um, I am a I am a relatively new JAWS Fusion uh, Zoom Text user. Does Vision Link provide training for those aspects of, of accessible technology? We do, yes. Yeah. Yes. So we have um, one of our access technology instructors is JAWS certified um, specifically to help with, um, you know, be the beginning uh, knowledge of JAWS. Um, we our computer classes and our computer workshop, it really is based on like the current level of need. So we are actively trying to recruit an additional contracted access technology instructor. So this might be a good opportunity to plug that if anyone knows, <laughs> if anyone knows that I'm sure you've already stolen or, or given them to someone else. They're so rare. Um, we do have a high interest in, in computer software specifically. And we know the importance of being able to provide that one-on-one -on -one because there is varying levels of knowledge when it comes to that. Um, so the answer to your question is yes, but we are actively looking to bring on additional instructors so we can increase our capacity for providing that. And I want to add so to I, that, Beth, about the oh, fact yeah. that our two instructors, both are blind. 
um, <laughs> and one is blind deaf. So they come from a place of knowing and they're very good at uh, providing that guidance to those who either have recently lost their sight or are losing their sight. So they're, they're very hands-on in that way, even mm -hmm. though it's a virtual experience. I just I just want to jump in real quick and say that I'm I'm actually really excited to learn about these these resources and get a get a refresher because I I, I do a lot of work with um with blind students and people from the community um I I just have a lot of speaking engagements my, my myself be, being blind and I'm a also a, a marketing professor at Westchester University um <clears throat> So I, you know, really have hands in this community, uh, you know, obviously aside from accessible pharmacy, I'm the, 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 you know, local chapter Philadelphia president of the FFB currently and, and very proud to have that role. I actually was just communicating with uh, a gentleman yesterday who was just recently diagnosed with RP and has had a very uh, rapid deterioration in vision and had absolutely no idea where to go or where to turn. And so, you know, I have all of the, this this wild list of wonderful resources, but trying to trickle it out so the poor gentleman doesn't feel like he's drinking out of a fire hose. But he had a, a pretty, you know, terrific career as a um, uh, working in IT, particularly in uh, cybersecurity. And with the, his loss of uh, uh, vision, really wants to get back to that. And and it's I, I'm telling him all about the the the, the system technology and, and Jaws and Fusion, and it's really wonderful to hear that there are, are uh, resources and training available that could uh, possibly help him with you know especially with his his particular area of expertise and in, in IT proficiency. And just getting that assistive technology aspect to, you know, uh, get him, you know, possibly hired uh, again, working in that capacity. So this is this is all Absolutely. really exciting. Alex, this is Beth from Vision Link again. I I promise I won't try to take up too much of the space promoting Vision Link, but I think that um, something that we really try to do as an organization is find the the provider that does it best. So we we really try to kind of act as that connector for individuals just like who you're talking about. If we're not going to be the, you know, the, the focus for employment, we connect them with the employment provider. But we can assist with some of the technology training or even just some of the perhaps social and emotional adjusting to vision loss. Um, the way that we can do that this for individuals is we have a few different steps depending on the level of comfort for the individual. The initial phone call, just getting to know what you're interested in, here's who we are, what we do. Then we can take it a step further to a more detailed enrollment process where we really go into the specifics of what are your needs and what do we provide. From that conversation is really where we kind of create those external references to the other providers that can do it, do it better, that are doing it really well. The next stage that, we have fantastic. is sort of like ancillary support. So we can invite them to um, join what we have. It's called like our new client orientation, which it it's a cohort of individuals who all sort of start at the same time to really create connections and learn from each other's lived experiences. And then we also have a monthly resource and referral network meeting that's open to anyone in the community. It's open to the public where we do exactly that. We just share resources that are available. We invite the participants that are on the call to share those resources as well. So it's just a really good way of building a network of information. So I would really encourage you, Alex, to uh, you know share our information with him or if he's comfortable having you share his information with us, we can reach out to him. Um, we're really proud of the fact that we have a one day turnaround, one, one business day turnaround for all of our um, contact for people who are referred to us or reach out to us for services. So that's my little plug. <laughs> no, that, that's wonderful. I mean, this, this gentleman, for example, like he, he, he ordered a cane online and is trying to teach himself how to walk around with a cane. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. There's. Yeah. <laughs> There's a problem. Let's we, get him. Let's we, get him we, some we can, services. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> we can, we can, we can find people to to help. Yes. You, like, you know, it's. Uh... 
So <laughs> Eric would have a have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> He's our O and M uh, certified O and M instructor. He'll be like, no, no, no. <laughs> well, we are at the top of the hour. This has truly been a fabulous Philly forum, if I might say so. Thank you so much to everybody who uh, participated, presented, helped put this together. Uh, we look forward to seeing all of you in May, and we will connect with the date and time for our next Philly forum. We encourage you to reach out to us with other professionals within your network who may be interested in participating during our next go around. And we'll also, also be asking for some input on who might be a next um, who might be a next round of good presenters for this Philly Forum. So thank you all. Have a wonderful evening and uh, we'll see you soon. We'll be following up with the recording and all of the notes from tonight's session. So thank you. Thank, oh, thank you. you. Bye. Good night. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye.